This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. That's right. Welcome to Inside the Jaguar Nation. A Jaguar Nation on a four-game winning streak. Ooh. I'm Brian Hall, and he's Morgan Beard. Oh, yeah, they're feeling good over there on the bluff. We got the Southern <laughs> Jaguars this week taking on Arkansas Pine Bluff, Little Rock, War Memorial oh, Stadium. Tough place to play. Oh, yeah, what a war it was. A big battle over there. Let's get right to the highlights. No need to waste your time. We got the jukebox jamming as usual on a great day. The Golden Lions, they get the ball first and march right down the field. Quarterback Earl Patterson finds Paris Mack for the 33-yard touchdown. UAPB up 7-0. But we know the Jags would respond. And look at this. Whoa. The trickeration here. Whoa. Danny, I can do it all. Johnson with the passing touchdown. And Dennis Craig for the 12-yard touchdown. Tie ball game. But UAPB, they come right back. Keyshawn Williams goes for the 26-yarder into the end zone to put the Lions up 14-7. But check your watches. It's Austin Howard's time. The leader finds a speedy freshman from Alexandria, Louisiana, Jamar Washington, for the big 63-yard touchdown. And the Jags, Brian, they were off and rolling. Yeah, and come right back, number seven, Austin Howard. Once again, this time to Dontrell Brown. Get in the end zone right there. And the scoring fest, I guess you could say, would begin. <laughs> Howard finds his new favorite target, Jamar Washington, for the eight-yard score. 34-14 at the half. Oh, but you knew the Golden, Li Golden Lions were going to back down. Brandon Duncan finds Jeremy Brown, 40-32. to The Jags, though, they're going to ice this on the ground. A 46-yarder to the house to Von Ben. Final of this one. Jags win, 47-40. Ah, uh, you know, it was up and down. You know, it's been, it's been a rough road for these guys, but we found a way to win a football game. Uh, we'll play better. We'll refocus and we'll get back on track. Palm Bluff was able to do some things to move the ball down the field. You gave up 40 points. Some of the issues on defense tonight. Well, I mean, got to go back and look at the film, but they look like they were able to throw the ball. You know, quarterback scrambles. It's just, just again, it's a young guys got to understand angles and, and send the ball back inside, but, you know, just didn't, just didn't play very well. Your team scored 47 points on the yeah. plus side. Talk about your offense and what you guys were able to do. They're getting better. You know, now we got to match that intensity, you know, through the rest of the you know, the team, but, you know, mainly it was some lows there, and it's been, you know, a tough trip for these guys, but they'll regroup. You come back home Monday, uh, next Saturday you have Prairie View at home. You're undefeated since you had the new turf. What to look forward to with that game? Well, it's senior day, and, you know, hopefully we play a lot better than we did tonight. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, and unfortunately, the struggle wasn't just on the field there. We're going to bring in our insider right here, our Southern insider, Aaron Lee. They were dealing with a lot more the night before, losing the team psychologist on the trip. Uh, Dr. Deborah Fountain, uh, what were they going through? It was a big loss this week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, you can kind of see they're, they're on the field right there, mourning the team's loss. Southern also releasing a statement, right? Yeah, they released a statement on the loss of Deborah De uh, Dr. Deborah Fountain. Southern University football mourns the loss of student volunteer and team psychologist. Dr. Deborah Brown Fountain, who passed away Friday afternoon in Little Rock, Arkansas. Since 2013, Dr. Fountain worked exclusively with FSU's football program as team therapist. She was a fixture on the team's road trips and on the Jaguar sideline. She was 63. I call her the brain trust. You know, I think she's the, she's the, the mental focus. You know, she's the mental coach. Um, so many young people have so many issues and problems that you and I probably can't begin to sit down and understand. There's no replacement. There's no replacement to be able to have somebody that, that can do that for your team. And that's what she did for our team. And being around this team was, was, was everything to her. And she loved every individual that was a part of it. And I know they feel the same about her. And we're going to miss her dearly. Yeah, the Jags will cope with this one in the coming days and weeks, and there's no easy way to transition, but back to the field now. We saw the offense blow up, but that Jags defense allowing 40 points just one week after allowing a little more than they anticipated versus Jackson State. Aaron, what are you seeing with that defense that seems to be a little leaky at the moment? It goes back to tackling. That's been their Achilles heel. Although the defense has had some decent performances, they are taking bad angles again on plays and not wrapping up guys. <laughs> but defensively, it was just, again, to me, big plays. It's like in space, it's like we just have a hard time getting guys on the ground. On special teams, we backed up, and you got a chance to get off the field or at least make them drive the ball. You get a, I think, a 12-yard punt. So, I mean, I can't put my hands on you to tell you 
what happened in the second half that led to a, a tremendous letdown defensively, but we better figure it out. You know, we got a good football team coming here next week. Yep, that they do. Thanks, Aaron Lee, for joining us. We'll hear more from you here in just a second. But first, we bring you the sounds, the sights. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts of the show. It's the human jukebox. <laughs> but coming up, we'll talk about what's actually been helping the Jaguars get in that win column now four straight times. Yeah, that offense is a big part of that. But later in the show, we'll have our special SU feature, as always. And this time, it's not something you'd expect. Inside the Jaguar Nation. We're coming right back after this break. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation. You're watching Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm, with Brian Holland, Morgan Beard, Ashley Lyotis, and Aaron Lee. That's right. Welcome back to Inside the Jaguar Nation. Morgan Beard, Aaron Lee, and Brian Holland. we got the whole team right here. <laughs> and, and Aaron, let's talk more about the strengths of this Jaguar team. They're going to need to rely upon those strengths. We're all looking towards Grambling, right? So. What do you kind of assess this team's strengths are going into the last few games? Brian, it's the offense. Yeah. This team will go as far as senior quarterback <laughs> Austin Howard will take them, yeah. which is not a bad thing. No, 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 no. he's pretty no. good. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you want the ball in one of your best players' hands, and you want a confident quarterback who isn't afraid in a big moment and to make plays. I think he's as healthy as he's been. He, he had total control. You know, He had full command of what we were trying to do. And I was pleased with that. I thought he played extremely well. And we needed him to play well tonight. And we're going to need him to play extremely well going down the stretch. I think he's confident in his receivers. You know, I was happy to see uh, Jamal Washington again had a pretty big night. And, you know, uh, uh, Dylan Beard caught some balls. I mean, he had a good day. Uh, Duntrell Brown caught some balls. Mackie. So we're spreading the ball around. I think Hurd ran the ball well. Ben coming back gave us another threat. He ran the ball well. So offensively, is, I, I thought Austin – play the way we expect them to play and everybody else rose they love as well and hey those are lofty expectations thanks Aaron for joining us once again here on inside the Jaguar Nation and you know when you tune in you get you some jukebox as well <laughs> that never gets old Brian hey we're heading to another break but coming up Holly you're hitting the, the, the film we're breaking down some plays getting out all those tools and gadgets and taking a little dive in to the Southern Jaguars win and as always it's a busy time on the bluff to bust out that calendar and give you a rundown of what you need to know here on Inside the Jaguar Nation. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. That's right, welcome back to the show. Brian Holland standing by in the film room, but football season is moving along quickly as other Southern sports are as well. Ashley Otis is here now to give you all the details on the bluff. There's a lot going on on the bluff this week, but first, let's take a look at how some of the Jags teams fared this week. The Cross Country SWAC Championship was this week in Clinton, Mississippi. Southern did not compete, but the men's Jackson State team came in first, and the Mississippi Valley team came in first for women's. The soccer team had two games this week. On Sunday, they lost to Alabama State 8-1, to and on Friday, they tied with Jackson State. Coming up this week, the volleyball team will continue the SWAC roundup, taking on Texas Southern on Monday and Arkansas Pine Bluff on Thursday. And the soccer SWAC championships will start on November 5th. We'll, of course, have more results next week on Inside the Jaguar Nation. Hey, thank you very much, Ashley. Now it's that time again. Brian Holland entering the film room to dig a little deeper on some key Southern plays from yesterday's victory. Brian, what you got over there? Yeah, that's right, Morgan. We're going to talk about the offense and some of that defense that maybe let down the Jags as well. We're going to cover both sides of the ball, but first it's Austin Howard. And let's start with a little good, a little trickeration from offensive coordinator Chinnis Berry of the Jaguars. Let's go ahead and roll this right here. You can see uh, they line up Dan Danny Johnson in the backfield. They're concerned about his athleticism, and, and maybe Austin Howard missed out on a receiving touchdown right there. Danny Johnson electing to go to the tight end in the back of the end zone. And Jaguar fans, you may want to look away on this one. Thank goodness no replay or instant replay in this instance because the Jags may have just gotten away with one. It was a call touchdown on the field though, 7-7 at that point. Now let's move on. You can see right here you've got a 4-2-5, which means you've got two linebackers to stop the run instead of three, usually in a 4-3 defense. And that means the option read, handing it off. 
You've got less linebackers to come up and run fit. Now they do set the edge, but this guy is actually the wrong guy. It's supposed to be the defensive end setting the edge. That's going to cause more problems, as you can see. Linebacker takes the wrong angle, and no safety coming down. Where's, where is he? You're going to see him in just a second. And unfortunately, it's in space, and it's tough to tackle a good running back in space. They didn't get it done, led to the touchdown. You have to fix that for Gramlin State. Now let's go back to the offense. Austin Howard, we should just call him 24 karat because he's magic through the air. Check him out. Into the window right there. Fits it above two defenders into the safe hands of Dylan Beard. Look, we're all looking forward to that Grambling State uh, game coming up between Southern and Grambling State, the Bayou Classic. You can have number seven look like this all you want, but you need to fix what you have to fix there on defense if you want to compete with the Tigers here in about a month. Morgan? Brian, sounding good over there, but as always, uh, the human jukebox sounding a little bit better, my friend, as they take us here to break. But don't worry, we have a lot of Inside the Jaguar Nation coming up, including Perry White and Garrett Edgerson giving their always unique perspective. And, of course, we're going to go big picture and take a look at those SWAC standings when Inside the Jaguar Nation returns. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. Welcome back to Inside the Jaguar Nation. He's, of course, Morgan Beard. I'm Brian Hahn with you here every Sunday night right here on Fox 44. And we've talked football. We've yeah. even talked cross country. <laughs> we've talked about four game winning streaks. Did you know that Southern has a bowling team? No, I did not. Or I, I should have lied there. I should have said, yeah, of course, Brian, I did. I should have. I, I gave well, it away. Well, you learned it this week because, exactly. I mean, obviously, uh, we're, we're trying to give you a different perspective, yeah. give you something that you don't really get anywhere else. Exactly. And two people that are doing that better than anyone yeah. else are very own Perry White and Garrett Edgerson. They're always taking their cameras behind the <laughs> scenes. You know their names. You know their work by now. And this week, Brian, as you said, showcasing a little something different. Southern's bowling team. Things that make Southern University bowling unique is the fact that you have a collegiate bowling team on the HBCU campus. Uh, Southern University bowling started around the early 2000s uh, under uh, then athletic director Floyd Kerr and uh, it was one of those movements that took place where the NCAA was looking into adding an additional sport mainly for uh, women's collegiate athletics and uh, bowling kind of came about and uh, Southern University started its bowling team around that time and Karen, Karen Kuvion was our first head coach and uh, up until recently was our only head coach and uh, the bowling program for being so young and fairly new uh, had early success and was, was very formidable in the SWAC when several SWAC championships and actually competed on a national level. Southern's won SWAC. Uh, the previous coach uh, in 16 years time, she won SWAC eight of the 16 years and then came in either second or um, a close third uh, the, the years that she didn't win first place. When I took over the program, we really didn't have the quality bowlers that we needed. So this is our first year, in my third year here, that we actually have a more competitive team. We've already been to one tournament where we beat all of the SWAC teams that we uh, faced, and uh, I thought we did rather well. I hope that in the future that it just gets bigger and better and that uh, we do more than just SWAC teams. I'm hoping to see some of the other local teams close by um, and, and be competitive against them also. So for the bowling program, its history, its early stages are signified just that, that they were successful and that they competed for championships year in and year out. That they do. By the way, Morgan, you got yourself a, a Southern Jaguar bowling ball? I do now. Why not? <laughs> Why wouldn't you have Why a Southern Jaguar? That Columbia Blue looks great on the lanes. By the way, coming up, as we do every week, we go through your SWAC standings and we're scouting the next opponent, Prairie View A&M. All the points, as Morgan said, will be scored this next week. We'll talk about it coming up right here on Inside the Jaguar Nation. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. 
Hey, welcome back to Inside the Jaguar Nation. Morgan Beard, Brian Holland, as always. And as we're moving along in this football season, it's always good to take a step back, look at the bigger picture, and check out of the, exactly how that SWAC is doing. Well, when you're in the SWAC race, you got to look over your shoulder and see those <laughs> ankle biters maybe trying to catch yeah. you. Let's look at the SWAC West standings. Grandland State, of course, on top. That will be taken care of, hopefully, in the Bayou Classic. Mm -hmm. But Southern sitting right there. And then right behind them, Prairie View. Hey, look. You cannot look past Prairie View a and This is always a very competitive game. It has always a lot of numbers as we High just uh, yeah, to be we're certain. going to talk about that here in just a second. UAPB, they took the L, so they're two and six right there. But Texas Southern, 0 and seven. And I look at that, by the way, and I, I see a team with nothing to lose. Yeah. They're still on your schedule if you're Southern. So watch out. I, I know it looks like there's a clear view to the Bayou Classic. It is not. There's always a spoiler late in the season. Texas Southern, as you're saying, Brian, could be that team. Yeah, you can't let that happen. Let's go to the SWAC East standings, and just as I predicted, yeah. Alcorn stayed up on top. The two Alabama schools doing battle this past weekend, and, and this was very interesting. Mississippi Valley State taking on Jackson State. Coach Comagy used to be at Jackson State. Remember, in his first mm. year back, took down his former team, but the Delta Devils actually losing to Jackson State. Ooh. Jackson State getting their first win of the season. Yeah, you know, uh, it was a, a long time coming maybe for Jackson State. The way they played against Southern just a couple weeks ago, finally got on the board. Southern uh, fans were probably rooting for yeah, another loss. They Southern, wanted to keep them open, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, basically everyone outside of uh, Jackson State is probably okay with them not getting that first Pretty win. Much, yeah. But hey, uh, you mentioned Prairie View A&M. That is the next team on the schedule for the Southern Jaguars. So let's do a little uh, scouting report, shall we? We know they can put up some numbers. Quarterback Lavelle McCullers, he has a cannon and can make some big plays. Now, he's not the most efficient this year, completing less than 50% of his passes, but when he does, they count. That's because of the wideouts. One in particular, senior Joshua Simmons, who can stretch that field and make some plays on special teams. And, of course, Kadero Hodge, averaging 18 yards a catch. So, Danny Johnson in that uh, secondary might have their hands full. Now, one negative for Prairie View is that the Panthers, they've shown to lose some composure at Ooh. times this year. Look at the video we're showing you. Last month versus Alabama State, starting tight end is Zarion Holcomb threw some punches Ooh. after the Ooh. Panthers scored. So no emotions can always run high, especially in football. So Southern, you want to be sure not to fall into that trap. Yeah, that's not good, especially when you're talking about a rival, just as you just said, it's at Ace Mumford Stadium. Take care of business, move on. Exactly. All right, we're moving on. Thank Ashley you. Liotis. For Aaron Lane, yeah. Morgan Beard, I'm Brian Hall. Thanks for joining us inside the Jaguar Nation.